Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada. Our goal is to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. My name is Christopher Brown, your host for this exciting journey. This episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association Conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in April. Today's guest is Maple Creek Mayor Michelle McKenzie. So let's get started. Um, very first question I've asked all my uh, political guests, you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Where did the hard-hitting question goes right off to the start. I know. Um, I, I guess it's right from the time I was a young child, and I was told I wasn't. I wanted to make a change, and I did. Why did you choose municipal politics? Because you could have chosen to give back through volunteerism, through nonprofits, but you chose the political route. I did, because in our community, one of the things that I felt was missing was a younger voice on council. Most of the council in the past has been over 65 to 80, and I believe that um, things were changing, and a change needed made. What do you mean by change? Uh, Let's dive into the issue. The, the word change is a very ambiguous word, okay, so for so you, what did change mean? Change meant um, seeing the community as growing and being vibrant, not staying the same. Okay, and how do you think you, sh you were able to do that? Because... When did you first get elected, if you don't mind me? I got elected in 2012 as a councillor, and then I became the mayor um, in September of 2018, and a okay. by-election. So in 2012, what was the decision that you said, okay, this is the time, if not now, when? If not, if I don't do it this election, what election should I do it in? What was going on in 2012 in Maple Creek? Uh, nothing. Okay. That's a very weird mm. answer to give me. <laughs> There was nothing. Like, like it no was, growth? No, like it was nothing. stagnant? Yes. You know, it was just, there was there was nothing that was moving the town forward. No new businesses coming in. You know, we had a, a, the previous councillor, they had uh, did a subdivision that was empty. You know, the, there, was, there was nothing. Like there was some forethought, but no action, I guess, into some of the, the decisions that they made. And I felt that... Um, there needed to be a younger voice on that council to get things moving in a direction because we're not just a retirement home town. Is that the perception of your community? Yes. From yes. your community or from outside your community? I think from my community. Really? Yes. Because Even today? Like not 13 today. years? No. Okay. No. Now it is more totally different because, you know, um, the kids... The ranching community, because we're surrounded by agriculture, right? And the ranching yep. community. So people, what they were doing before is they retired, they come into Maple Creek. That's it. Now, the reality is, is, okay, there's a place for people to come home and raise their kids. Once they've been out in the world and want to come back and start the ranching or start a business or just have, have that hometown uh, feeling with the big city heart. You know, like there, we've got different things that are going on in Maple Creek that is not the busy type city stuff, but we still have most of the stuff we can offer for the city type people. So when did you start seeing the transformation? Because I, I like talking about this from the council slash elected official position because residents will see the change slowly, drastically, mm -hmm. but you will see it more prominently because you're making the decisions that are, these changes are based on. So you get elected in 2012. When did you start seeing the changes and going back to your original statement of nothing was going on in 2012, 11 years later, is that the same? No, absolutely not. So I would say that in 2014, 15 is where change really started to happen. We did some different things with revitalizing our downtown Main Street, where the council of the day... How important is it Main Street for a municipality your size? Ab absolutely important. That is the... When you come in and when you're looking, that is the focal point. We just shot a movie in Maple Creek because our Main Street, as as the producer said, is like a Hallmark movie card. Like, uh -huh. yeah, exactly. So with, with seeing that, and that was coming for, like I said... And again, maybe it was just my, for myself looking in that nothing was being done and nothing was happening maybe it was just too slow to be happening but some of the steps were already in place for the main street revitalization and, and again this was from a younger um, staff member that was on the board seeing that vision 
Okay. Right? So, and then being able to present it to somebody that is ready to take that vision on. So that is where that council from 12 to 14, 16, 17, we're very important part, piece of that. Wanting the change, making sure that, yes, the first impression of Maple Creek needs to be boom, bang. We want people to, to see us, love us, move here. Do you, get, do you need buy-in when you have issues like that? Because there's a lot of nimbyism out there. And I think I, I'm not breaking anyone's spirits here when I say there's a lot of Canadians who don't want change. Yes. So yes. for you... When you were going through these changes, was the village buy-in prominent or was it not? Because apathy is a major issue in municipal governments. When you were doing these changes, was there apathetic nature or was there a nimbyism in there? No, I think there is apathetic nature. Um, the, the town of Maple Creek, uh, we're a very f- resilient community. We're a very forward-thinking community. And once they have the push and the right people in the seats to make those things happen, they, they're there. They're there. You know, like our Main Street, there wasn't one business that didn't take part of that Main Street program and revitalize the whole downtown. You know, and then when you have uh, our, our volunteers that come out for Communities in Bloom, so that they're helping and they're taking pride in it. And so they want to make sure that that first impression, so keeping that whole spirit and involving the community in those things helps them feel like they're part of that, right? And I, I feel that's where this council's from 2012 till now is we're making sure that the community is part of those decisions. We're having those conversations. It's just not, well... We're building a subdivision, and you're paying on it for the next 10 years through a levy. Wow. Yeah. This is the most interesting conversation I've had here so far. Oh, sorry. And, and <laughs> no, I, I love it because, and, I, and I'm not trying to be rude, you're kind of honest. <laughs> where, where does that come from? Because are you like this with your residents as well? Like, Absolutely. Like, if we don't do this, it's our cities, our town's not going to grow? Yes. I don't Why do you bl- think that's important in today's age? Well, why would you want to blow smoke? I would, I'd like to introduce you to a few uh, politicians I've met during I my know. time. And, and I, I realistically, because people look to mayor and council to be the saving grace. Do, they, do you think they look to you more than they look to their MLAs or MPs? Yes. Yes, they do. They do, because they're right there. That's their tax dollars. The, everything that's coming through there, when we do our budget and our taxes and raise the taxes or anything else, it affects them. It doesn't affect the MLAs or the province, what is coming back through. So they're looking to us to have good leadership. We can't have good leadership unless we know what they need, what is, is there. We're elected for all the people in our community, not just a certain sector. And I f- So how do you balance that? How do I balance that? Yeah, because I guarantee you there's probably a vocal minority in mm-hmm. your town. Like you're, you're rolling your eyes right now as I say this but there's always a vocal minority who is always louder than the people, the average citizen. And I'm not trying to paint a broad stroke here, but I have noticed this a lot. How do you balance the needs of the vocal minority with the needs of everyone? Well, f- for myself, and, uh, and this is a... And this is your opinion? This is yeah. not a decision of council? No, this is, no. How do you do it? So... I actually sit down and, and have the conversation. I, don't, I do not believe, in, and um, becoming the mayor has actually helped me evolve into this, is because I don't care who you are or what you are or the color of your skin you are. If you're part of my community, I will hear you. I will listen. And there's no difference between any, any person in my community from, from the, the poorest of the poorest to the richest of the richest. You're still the same. And I, I, I try to see everybody as, as, as equal, and everything and decision that I'm doing, because I need to provide water, infrastructure, um, protective services, that, everybody needs it. It doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are. So that's where I have, have taken that down and, and looked at for all of that. And to try to make sure that any decision I, I make around that table, make sure it's even. And there is no up or there is no down. You talk about protective services. I'm yes. going to ask the political question here, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Is the village, of, uh, the town of Maple Creek under RCMP? Yes. So you just got a big paycheck. You just got a big bill from the federal government, which you're probably not happy about. I know. You're going to have to pay that as much as we're trying to see what's going to happen if the federal government's actually going to pick it up. 
that's going to come on the backs of your municipality. That means your taxes are going to go up. That means services might have to be cut if you don't want to go up a large amount. What does a town like yours do when you get a big giant bill like this, when you have a federal government telling you you need to pay a bill, you have residents saying we need potholes fixed, we need infrastructure funding for our streets, for our playgrounds. How do you balance them? Well, that is... Who comes first? Uh, my residents come first. My oh. residents come first. And you know, the unfortunate part is, and when we keep thinking about policing and how things are going, I'm really leaning towards other alternatives for that. Because yes, we need to provide it. You're being it. honest about that. You're, like, it, you're absolutely. saying RCMP is on the table. It, that, exactly. And when I'm looking that I have uh, nine R- eight RCMP in my community, we pay uh, $95 per capita for those. And they, they're not there in our in our community because they have 10,000 square kilometers to have to, to, to uh, patrol. Mm, my citizens don't feel safe. They're not getting the bang for the buck. So as municipal government and as the Merrimack Creek, we really need to look at some different options. Can you explain a, a different option? Is it a town police force? Could be. They're like when I'm I'm one of the things that I'm really wanting to explore. I, I, I apologize for no. like going in a completely different no, direction. That is you fine. are the first person who's willing to talk about this so openly and so bluntly. Well, I'm very disappointed. I am very disappointed and usually when I'm disappointed I'm trying to figure out ways to protect my community because that's that's who I am. Yep. Um and that there is when we're looking at different alternatives and what's happening, I'm still looking and I'm picturing, because again, I'm, I'm sitting here as a SUMA board member also of the Southwest, what that might look like for a whole different policing in the Southwest corner. Yeah. Are we getting together? Because we're all facing the same thing down in, in, in our area, like the Shaunavin and the, the leaders, Fox Valleys, and that whole corner there. Because then, of course, we have a city of Swift Current who has city police yep. and also the um, RM police. But this has taken us in a whole different direction. Is there something that we're looking at a regional police force? Why not? Why not? We need to start thinking outside the box to make sure that we're getting what we're done. And stop relying, because you, you just heard me say that everybody's looking to the government to be the savior. And what happened just right now? The federal government is letting how many people down in the province of Saskatchewan? Well, everywhere, pretty much. Yeah. Right? This Anywhere is the, that has an RCMP. Exactly. So, and even those without RCMP just got a bill as well for some strange reason. So you, you see what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's, yes, there's the elections coming up. Yes, there's this. But we need to start taking care of ourselves and figuring out other alternatives than depending on the provincial and the federal government. Does, does the average resident know about this, though? Like, when you tell people in uh, Maple Creek, this is what's going on, we just got a bill for X amount of dollars from the federal government, are they going, so? Or yeah. are they actually going, well, what are we going to do? Well, uh, see, this is, well... This comes back to the apathy. apathy. We've been talking about a, a little bit of, of what is coming up and how things are going to be going, especially in the budget, when we're looking at how much, because uh, every year I keep saying, this is what we're doing, because this is how much this costs us now. Next year, we know when we're going to be paying this amount, plus, again, that they are, they're under contract and how things are going, but they're not seeing the picture until it's put right in front of their faces, right? And then they're like, wow. Well, what are we going to do about it? I don't know what we're going to do about it because, again, we need to explore those options. But right now, I tell you, I don't feel the town of Maple Creek needs to be put in this position to have to pay all this money. Do you know the bill? Mine is about two hundred and an extra. It's an extra hundred twenty thousand dollars. So I'm assuming your director of finance or corporate services or whatever they yeah. call them. Um, has done the math. Yes. What's that increase for taxes? Is that 3% possibly or even two? Uh, well, 1% for me and my taxes is about 30. So, so you're looking at a 10% increase, increase potentially. Yeah. Just for policing. That's not even cost of inflation. No. <laughs> but but you see, and, and when we talk about protection in our citizens and trying to f- give them the 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 resources and the the infrastructure and the services that they need just the basics is this a basic service that we really need yeah or can we look oh we need i shouldn't say that do we really need we need protection we need policing some sort but is it the rcmp I want to talk about yourself a little bit here before i let you go and i want to know this from you as mayor of the town of maple creek 
What's been the biggest learning experience for you as a municipal official? Well, let me tell you, since I became the mayor, (laughs) I've had a pandemic. (laughs) I was about to say, I can imagine you plan for everything, but you get thrown loops all the time. All the time. Like, let's take last year. Like, um, I'm also very... There's a plan, I follow a plan. Like, I'm very structured, right? Things can go, but I'll, I know that there's a plan and this is what we're doing. So, like, last year when we come to SUMA, of course, I have new council, right? And so some of them have stayed back. And so I'm like, okay, if there's something happened, this is the deputy mayor, this is what's going on. Oh, never, never, nothing will happen, Michelle. Don't worry about it. We had the worst snowstorm ever that took out 900 power poles in the town of Maple Creek and surrounding area maple creek was without power for three days some of the surrounding area was without for seven days yes and so and of course vital infrastructure like our water treatment plant like our we have seven wells we don't have generators out for seven wells and trying to figure out how like it was and i'm stuck in regina my cao at the time was in regina and i have brand new council in maple creek and they've not went through any of this or anything else but each and every one of them stepped up. They made it happen, and, and it was it was turned out excellent. But th- those are the things. Uh, the I guess for me, it's making sure that you're always planning and planning and doing and doing. And also, um, the I like to be the mayor that makes sure that Maple Creek is on the map. I want my council to make sure that they're talking about their their community because we want people to come to Maple Creek. We want it to grow. We want to be where we are. We want to be leading the way and everything in the southwest. So as you see, we're always in a t-shirt. My table has a cow. My cow. Are you the cow table? I'm the cow table. Okay, I literally took a photo of that and I was like, "Who is this?" It's on the town t- of Maple so Creek. Okay, what's that mean? That well, because our thing is uh, the cow town. Maple Creek is called the old cow town. So uh, yes, and you come down, I'll actually give you a cow. Yes, I will be down right after this yeah. interview. You know, so and even when we went to FCM, when they held FCM in Regina, the cow came with us. Like, th- that is where we are. So you'll always be able to tell where the town of Maple Creek is. We usually bring a bag of goodies every day to give away for the pers- person that asks about the cow. And then just so then we're talking about who we are and what we're doing. So for me, as... I can even show you on my Instagram and Twitter that I literally said, <laughs> who in Suma has a cow at their table? But uh, I guess yes. because you're not on Twitter or social no. media, that you probably didn't see. See, see I, 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 I got Twitter, but I don't know how to use Twitter. Or the Instagram, or but I'm on Facebook. So, but at but the same time... Yeah. You don't. You're, I'm assuming your community isn't either. They uh, like no, the one-on-one. My community is t- on Twitter and Instagram. They do have that. No, not like the vill, not like the town, but no. like the average resident isn't going on Twitter and asking no. you a question no. or social no. media. No, they want to talk to you one-on-one. Exactly. And that's what I love about municipal politicians. You yep. guys are so connected. Yeah. I want to end on this question because I know you have to get to your meeting with the uh, premier here, um, and it's an important question. It's the million-dollar question. Okay. What makes the town of Maple Creek such a unique place to live, work, and raise a family? Our weather. (laughs) As you just (laughs) talked about 900 power lines being destroyed. It's the weather. Well, you Google it anytime. Maple Creek is always the hottest spot in Saskatchewan. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Um, No, actually, it's not. It's uh, it's, If I have to say what makes it the best place to work, live, and play is my residents. They are absolutely um, enthusiastic. They bring everything they have to the town of the Maple Creek. They're putting into their community to make it the best. So I have to honestly say it's, it's the residents of Maple Creek that make it the best place. Thank you so much for sitting down with the mayor. You betcha. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally... 
As much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross-Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.